Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to join the Patreon if you want to vote in the poll for Street Fighter builds, and like and subscribe for better boots next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Fran from Final Fantasy XII, a character some of you might not be familiar with. While I was streaming the game, my friend Anna pointed out that she's basically Chewbacca, and she wasn't wrong. Fran is an animalistic archer with advanced anger issues, who hangs out with a smarmy captain, and with said captain gets roped into leaning more good than neutral. The only difference is that one of those characters is a little too over-sexualized, and the other one is Fran. I'm a savage, yeah. Classy, bougie, ratchet, yeah. Sassy, moody, hey. nasty. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to figure out the goals. Final Fantasy XII lets you choose any two classes for your characters, and you can even swap them out later. We could do what we did with Final Fantasy VII and X, where we just focus on the jobs that the character is best at, but Fran is one of the all-arounders. She's actually the worst character in the game in terms of stats, which is why it's recommended to make her an archer, because they're the most rarely used class. Basically, they just want you to ignore her. How dare they? Still, she does have a bow when you meet her, so we'll make her an archer. Next, we'll get some mist frenzy, so we'll be a raving rabid. Finally, we'll make sure that we can fire with as much swiftness as possible. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just make sure your strength is high enough for multi-classing. Dexterity will be our top stat, letting us practice archery even with ridiculously bad arch support. Strength next, if you're gonna be stepping on people's necks, it helps to have some muscle mass. Wisdom after that, why are your ears so big? All the better to hear things with. Follow that up with constitution, being a sky pirate requires thick skin. Intelligence is a bit low, we're just not using it for a whole lot, and we'll dump charisma. It might seem incorrect, but there's a difference between being hot and being charismatic, and Fran isn't really the chatty type. Think of her like the rabbit version of Robert Pattinson. Rabbit Pattinson? Robert Rabbitson? up to you. Viera aren't a race in Dungeons and Dragons, those are magical bunny girls, so what is the best fit for them? Well, I was thinking Elf originally, they're haughty, magically connected, and they have big pointy ears. Sadly, Fran doesn't have any of that extra magic stuff since she left the woods to hook up with Balthier, so I'm thinking something like Wild Hunt Shifter, giving you plus two wisdom and plus one dexterity, 60 feet of dark vision, and our first little frenzy, Shifting. Shifting lets you give yourself temporary HP equal to your level, plus your constitution modifier once per short rest for a minute. Since you're a wild hunt shifter, you also get advantage on wisdom checks and can't be attacked with advantage while shifting, which will get kind of busted in a second. Wild hunt shifters get survival for free, so when we take the outlander background, we'll get athletics and arcana instead of survival, so that we can have a little connection to the mist even if it's a bit waning at the moment. We'll kick things off as a fighter. Fighters are good at fighting, and so are you. This will let you grab two skills from the fighter list. Acrobatics and perception feel right to me. You need sharp eyes as an archer, and your ears are literally Literally sharp. You get a fighting style, archery works well for archers, letting you add two to the attack rolls with your ranged attacks, making you incredibly accurate right out of the gate. You also get second wind, letting you recover 1d10 plus your fighter level and HP once per short rest as a bonus action for a little quick first aid when you need it. Second level fighters get action surge, letting you make two actions in a round once per short rest. Rabbits are famous for being fast, so imagine if a rabbit had legs that were four feet long and an appropriately sized torso, obviously. The idea of just a rabbit with four foot legs sounds terrifying. She's fast. I'm, I got sidetracked. Don't think about a rabbit with human legs. Third level fighters can choose a martial archetype and will go with champion for reasons that will become clear later. Champions get improved critical, letting you critically hit on a 19 or a 20 for a better chance of finding that enemy's weak spot. Fourth level fighters get an ability score improvement. Start off with your dexterity. I want to capped off before we grab a feat. Fighters get more ability score improvements than any other class, and we really need our stats high for this build to work as best as it can, even though Fran technically has bad stats in the game. That was an error. We're fixing the error. Fifth level fighters get an extra attack, letting you attack twice instead of once with your action. Swiftness only bumps your attack speed by 10% in Final Fantasy. This is 90% better than that. It's what Fran deserves. Sixth level fighters get another ability score improvement so we can cap off our dexterity score as fast as possible for insanely accurate shots that should make you the most consistent member of the squad. Seventh level champions are remarkable athletes, letting you add half your proficiency bonus to strength, dexterity, and constitution checks you don't have proficiency with, and you can add your strength modifier to the distance of a running long jump. I wish I could come up with some sort of joke about rabbits and jumping. 
I guess I'm just not that funny. Unlike Bugs Bunny, who is a bunny. Okay, I tied it back in. Eighth level fighters can grab a feat and the sharpshooter feat will let you fire at max range without disadvantage. You can ignore all but full cover and take a negative five penalty to your attack roll for a plus 10 to the damage roll. This is a really good feat. That's why it ends up on almost every single archer character I make because after the archery bonus, your proficiency bonus and your capped off dexterity, that negative five penalty only brings you down to a plus five attack bonus at this point. Ninth level fighters get indomitable, letting you reroll one failed saving throw once per long rest. Vitality is actually one of your better bad stats and failed saving throws can be brutal. 10th level champions get another fighting style. Unarmed fighting from the class feature variants Unearthed Arcana lets you deal 1d6 with your unarmed attacks, 1d8 if you've got two free hands. You deal 1d4 when you grapple someone and an extra d4 of damage to creatures you attack when they're grappled. This will use your strength modifier. I get that we've already capped our dexterity, so it would be ideal if we could do that, but we're gonna grab something to make it balance out a little bit later. Also, the Mist Frenzy Fran isn't exactly super technical when she stops people. It's more like, I'm here to kick ass and chomp carrots, and I'm all out of carrots. Also, some people get mad when I use Honor Arcana. Those people clearly don't follow me on Twitter, so if you wanna control my channel, you at least gotta follow me on Twitter, and probably join the Patreon to vote in the polls. It's Street Fighter this week. If you want Akuma instead of Ryu, make sure you vote. 11th level fighters get another extra attack, so with all sharp shots and your action surge, you can deal 6d10 plus 90 damage in a single round, letting you make your enemies cry with your onion arrows, and because they took over 100 damage in a single round. That would hurt a lot, I would bet. Now that we've got all that, let's get this Mist Frenzy that's a little more frenzied by bouncing over to Barbarian. I wanted to make sure that we didn't come over here until we had on our fighting style. Then I realized we were only one level away from another extra attack, so I decided to just round it out. Sure, we were also only one level away from an ability score improvement. But that describes over a third of fighter level, so eventually you just gotta pull the Rage trigger. Rage lets you give yourself resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage, advantage on strength checks and saves, and a bonus to strength-based attacks for a minute. Is this better than just shooting? someone? No, but it's in character. For something a little more useful, Unarmored Defense makes your AC 10 plus your Dexterity and your Constitution modifier. I wouldn't describe what you're wearing as armor. Honestly, I'm not even sure I can describe it as clothing. My biggest challenge with getting this footage was making sure the camera wasn't at a demonetized angle, and at the time of writing the script, I still have no idea if that worked. Wouldn't be a problem for Balthier, but hey, thanks for joining the Patreon to vote. I really appreciate it. Second level barbarians get reckless attack, letting you make your melee attacks with advantage if you don't mind giving your enemies advantage to hit you. Or you could activate your shifting ability, which would stop anyone from getting advantage on you, meaning it has literally no downside. You also get danger sense, giving you advantage on dexterity saving throws if you could see the source of the spell or trap that's trying to harm you. Rabbits are incredibly hard to catch. Just ask Elmer Fudd. Third level barbarians can choose a primal path. Berserker will let you make another melee attack as a bonus action while you're raging, though you'll take a level of exhaustion at the end of your rage. Again, this is not very good. If you really need a rage feature, come here and take it. But if you don't, you'd be much better off just sticking to fighter. Fourth level barbarians get another ability score improvement. Let's buff up our constitution for better AC and HP. Maybe I should invest in strength, but your unarmed attacks are never gonna be as good as your bow, so I'm just gonna power build a little bit to make Fran a little better than she is in the game. If we bounce back to fighter level 12, we get to grab another ability score improvement to do the exact same thing we just did with the last level, which will help justify our wardrobe choices. We just need it to be lightweight for Viera reasons. It's uh, cultural thing. 13th level fighters get Indomitable Part 2, letting you reroll two failed saving throws per long rest, which you can even use on death saving throws if you want to save money on Phoenix Downs or save the MP on Raze. Resurrection is a lot more expensive in D&D than it is in Final Fantasy, just pointing that out. 14th level fighters get another ability score improvement, Constitution. Invest in it. And remember, bumping your Constitution bumps your HP retroactively as well, so you'll be getting plus 18 HP here, not plus 1. 15th level champions get superior critical, letting you critically hit on an 18, 19, or 20 for a 15% critical hit chance, making it pretty likely that you're gonna land a crit in that action surge round to deal 10,000 needles worth of damage. Not really, but like, it's gonna be good. Our capstone is the 16th level of fighter, which will let us cap off our constitution, making us incredibly tanky, more bear than Teddy, despite what our outfit suggests. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you can send out crazy damage thanks to sharpshooter, three attacks per round, action surge, and an expanded crit chance. You're able to turn your enemies into pin cushions. You're also a heck of a tank with 20 AC and likely over 200 HP to make you surprisingly thick. Finally, physical saving throws don't stand a chance against you. With advantage on dexterity saves, capped dexterity and constitution score and proficiency with strength and constitution saving throws making you a master of athletic abilities 
For weaknesses, you have no method of magical damage, so hopefully someone on the team took black magic as their job. You're also lacking charisma, which can make for some rough roleplay checks and get you banished to other planes. Finally, almost everything you got from Barbarian is useless because it's for melee attacks and you do much better at a distance. But variety is the spice of life, and you and Balthier are living the spiciest life possible as Sky Pirates. Stay far away, get close, do whatever you want, nothing's gonna take you down. Just realize your long lifespan doesn't extend to your friends. Maybe that's why the other Viera don't join up with the Humes. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote in the poll for Ryu, Akuma, or Chun-Li from Street Fighter, and sub to Tulak and Mango to watch my playthrough of Final Fantasy XII, which was archived from Twitch. Oh, and follow me on Twitch.